from the rising sun to the setting, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. I put in the set. Let's just take a moment and just ponder on his faithfulness towards us. Let's just begin to just meditate on the faithfulness of our God, bringing us to this point in our lives, his faithfulness that has carried us through the pandemic, his faithfulness that has caused us to have life in the land of the living, his promises that never fail concerning us, that we can stand today as the righteousness of God, his faithfulness concerning his covenant that he has towards us, the thoughts that he has to prosper us, to give us a future and a hope in him today. Oh God, we're so thankful for your faithfulness towards us, that it never runs out. We can rely on it, we can depend on it, we can trust in it because you brought us to this point, we know you'll take us the rest of the way, God. So we enter in by faith through your presence that gives us a blood-bought right to be the righteousness of God tonight. And so we declare that all is well. Thank you, Father, for your plans and your purposes for us this night. Glory be to God. So we come praying, Father, lifting up every situation unto you right now every situation that is present here in this place, even those who are watching online, Father, I thank you that there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit, the same anointing that is here, the same presence that's here. You are Jehovah Shema in every area, every home, even concerning the war overseas, Lord. In the Middle East, we declare that you are Jehovah Shema. Come thy kingdom be done, thy will on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, we just receive all that you've made available for us for this day. We thank you, Father, for the dispensation of grace, and we thank you for victory. We thank you that you're the way maker. You're making ways where there was no way. Oh, we thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. And all that agree said amen. Amen, amen. amen. Glory be to God. Ooh, glory be to God. You can take your seat if you can. We're going to jump right into what I believe the Lord wants me to share with you and just make the most of the time that we have together. How many of you were at service on Sunday? My goodness. Were you blessed? That was a good word. If you weren't there and weren't able to listen, uh, or haven't listened thus far, I encourage you to go back and take a listen because it will bless your socks off. It will bless your life. Just the insight and the things that we are learning. I'm so thankful for our man of God. Amen? Amen. What a gift to the body of Christ. Okay, tonight I want to talk about something that God had placed on my heart a few weeks back, it may have even been a month or so back, but I want to talk about uh, some things that the Lord just has placed on my heart concerning our congregation, concerning this ministry, our church, our body, our family. I guess I would say it's more of a family word, I don't know, outside of this church, the, applicable, the application of it in other people's lives, but I just know that God is a right now God. Yes. And 
many times dealing with the things that we encounter in our everyday life, uh, he wants us to begin to hear from him on a day-to-day basis. And so uh, in some times past, the Lord had just really been laying on my heart concerning uh, this change, this shift that was taking place and has begun to take place. You know, as we have come out of the pandemic and as we are in this post-pandemic era, in many instances, we have to realize that the world has shifted. And so many instances as the body of Christ, we don't want to be stuck in the past. Uh, Pre-pandemic and doing things, uh, trying to bring back an old normal when God wants to allow us to make the alignment and to make the adjustments in our everyday life. And so tonight I want to spend a few minutes, the time that I have to talk about this shift, because I believe that it has already begun and it is going to continue to take place. If anything, we've got to jump on board. The train has left the station. And so we've got to get on board with what God is doing in these last days. And it's our responsibility as his children to make the adjustment. The word of God is not going to adjust to us and get down on our level. But how many you know, we've got to make the adjustment in our life and begin to recognize that I've got to get on board with what God is doing. I've got to flow with what God is doing. I've got to get over into the anointing of God for what God wants to take place. And so as he begins to shift us in our personal lives, then we can begin to be everything that the world needs and the reason why we're here. And so we have to realize that we are here for a purpose, not just to occupy space and matter, but we are here to make a difference. We're here to have his presence on the inside of us as the ambassadors, as God's representatives in the earth. And part of that is able to shift this natural realm, to begin to shift people towards the things of God, to begin to put their focus on him by how we live our lives, how we conduct ourselves, our manner, our behavior, our character, the things that we begin to do. And so I realized that in order for us to begin to get a hold of what God wants to do, there has to be this change in our thought life, our change in our mentality and in our mindset. And so we've spent some time talking about that because we know everything begins on the inside, right? Change begins on the inside. And so as we begin to expect this shift on the outside, it begins when we recognize that there's a newness within. And so last week we talked about leveling the playing field and talked about how we are in Christ. We're no longer seeing each other after the flesh, you know, under the old covenant, uh, by our race, by our gender, by our class. But because we are in Christ, we are new and we are standing on equal ground because we are in him. And so the level of the cross has been uh, made clear because of what Jesus did. And so at the foot of the cross, everything is level. Men, women, boys, girls, blacks, whites, uh, this class, that class, this pedigree, that pedigree. We're all at the place where we've fallen short, but it is through Jesus that he makes up the difference in our life. Come on, somebody. And so it is the difference maker that we have. It is this change that we have on the inside of us. Grace is the change maker. It causes us to begin to not see ourselves um, as we were before under the old covenant where women didn't have any rights, where blacks didn't have any rights, where the poor had no rights. And, but now that we are in Christ, I'm telling you, we have all the benefits, all the promises, all the provisions, and it's unearned and undeserved. Amen. Amen. So let's look tonight concerning this shift. Somebody say shift. shift. And so let me define for you what that word means, just so we're all on the same page as it relates to this word shift. It is a turnaround. Um, There are things that will begin to change as a result of a shift. And so it is a change that results in a favorable or beneficial outcome. It is a change. A shift is a change that results in a favorable and beneficial outcome. So, you know, things can obviously shift towards the negative, but we don't want to dwell on the negative. We're not talking about the devil tonight. We're not talking about Satan. 
We're not going to give him any attention. We're talking about the divine shift that causes the believers of God to begin to experience God's best. Anybody ready to experience God's best? That beneficial, the benefit, the advantage, the things that happen as a result of us being in Christ and realizing that God wants to do some things in the earth and he's going to do it through you and he's going to do it through me. And so we're talking about this favor that is unearned, that is undeserved, and it comes by us having relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? So when we look at this, we're talking about when God steps into a specific situation. Anybody got room for God to step in? (sighs) How many of you know when when the great stepper steps in, how many of you know things have to begin to shift? Selah. Woo. When he steps into that child's life and they were wayward and off course and all of a sudden you get that call. Hey, I'm giving my life to Christ. God steps into dead situations and all of a sudden things just begin to come alive. Hallelujah. So it's when God steps in. Somebody say step in. Step in. And so when he steps into a specific situation, he reverses a circumstance. And it reverses itself abruptly. Somebody say abruptly. I'm not talking about gradually, you know, slow as a nail, but I'm talking about a shift when it begins to happen abruptly. Turning it into a positive experience that is beyond explanation, beyond human and scientific explanation. And I've seen God do that time and time and time again. And so he wants us to lean in with our faith, lean into his word and realize that these things are possible through him and that it's already begun When he sent Jesus over 2,000 years ago, the world shifted. When Jesus died on the cross and went to hell on our behalf, how many of you know the world shifted? When Jesus was raised from the dead and all of a sudden they said he is alive, he is risen from the dead, they looked in the grave, he was no longer there. How many of you know the world shifted? And so it is in our life when we receive Jesus as our Lord and as our personal Savior, there should be something that shifts on the inside and we get a revelation of the Word of God and we understand who we are in Him and we see ourselves in the Word and we see ourselves no longer governed by the ways of the past or situations and our own upbringing and things like that, but we see ourselves and find ourselves in the Scripture. How many of you know things will begin to shift in our life? Amen? Amen. And so let's begin and let's talk about this tonight and really get a hold of this because I just believe that God will really give clarity to it. So God will reverse the irreversible concerning you. Look at Proverbs chapter 22. He will reverse. He reverses the irreversible. That which you've lost or has been lost or think is gone, God is able to bring it back. Not just like it was, but sevenfold. Better than what it was before. Unlike it was before. So much more than what it was. And so these are things that we can look at in the scripture where the prodigal father and the prodigal son were. Let's begin in Luke's gospel chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, somebody say shift. Shift. Now, the prodigal father was in an interesting place because uh, his son here in chapter 15, uh, it talks about him having two and the younger one uh, asked the father to give me the portions of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them uh, his living. 
And so when we begin to understand what's taking place here, we realize that God was doing something concerning the loss of the son that he thought was about to go into the things concerning uh, his plan, his desire, contrary to uh, the father's plan and the father's desire. But interestingly enough, we see here, and I won't for the sake of time read all of this, but the prodigal son ended up coming back home. And so that which seemed like it was lost ended up coming back. That which seemed like it was gone ended up being, what, restored. There was reconciliation that took place. There were things that began to shift in the mind of the son. And the scripture talks about how he came to himself. He came into his right mind. And as a result, things turned around in his life. And so regardless of those of you who may be parents of adult children and they may seem as if you know, things are not changing, that all is lost and all is gone. I'm telling you, just begin to remind yourself of this parable, of this scripture, because the scripture says and talks about how God began to restore and bring back. And so we are mindful of this, even in Proverbs chapter 22, because what does he say? You train a child up, in the way that they should go, when they're old, they'll come back. Amen? So we can't be moved by present situations, present circumstances. The father was looking in expectation. When you look at this in the uh, Bible, it talks about how he saw and he was looking from afar off looking in expectation for a son to come back home. And you know what? That's what happens. That shift began to take place in that child's life to the point where he said, I've got more uh, out here and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Let me go ahead and make myself uh, and fulfill the destiny that God has for his life. And so there are things that are happening in the realm of the spirit. And he will bring back that which seems lost and gone and cause reconciliation. And one thing I want to remind you of tonight is don't judge someone based on their present season. Aren't you glad no one judged us based on our present season? Because you don't know what is about to change because, you know, all of a sudden, things will begin to change and turn around because he is the God of the turnaround. And so that's why you can't judge somebody based on where they are. Well, you know, they're just a heathen or they're just, you know, going to hell and they're no good. They're trifling They're because all of a sudden they get a revelation of who they are in Christ and receive Jesus on the inside of them. And they realize that they are the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus. And so we cannot begin to base everything on where a person is their season in life because that's where Joseph in Genesis chapter 39, he was in prison. I'm sure people thought that he'd be in prison all his life and that he'd be an inmate and that he would stay there incarcerated and have to abide by all the rules of being an inmate and all the regulations, but all of a sudden, the way maker came in. And he recognized some things concerning his life. And so no longer was he in that place of seeing himself as a prisoner because there was promotion that happened in his life. And God just caused things to change. Look over Genesis chapter 39, verse 19, where Joseph experienced the shift in prison. And there are things that God is doing behind the scenes that we don't know about. That's why you can't judge somebody, because you don't know what God is doing. He says here in chapter 39, it says, and it came to pass 
when his master heard the words of his wife, which he spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. This is when Joseph was placed in the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But look at verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph. My goodness, my goodness. When we get a revelation of the fact that the Lord is with someone and that Jehovah Shema begins to show up in their life, the ever-present one, the scripture said that the Lord showed him mercy and gave him what? Favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there, Joseph was the doer of it. Another translation says that he was in charge of it. How many know that's because things began to turn around and things began to change in his life? Because Joseph was telling them all about what he would do and the dreams that he'd have and how things would begin to put them in a position of subordination. And they said, absolutely not. His own family began to turn against him. But you know what? It took God getting involved and getting on the heart of the uh, master of the prisoner and the prison system. And then things began to change. And then in verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, talking about Joseph, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the scripture says the Lord made to prosper. Amen? Amen. Now, look at this, um, even concerning Hosea. I won't turn there for the sake of time, but there was um, a wife, Hosea's wife was named Gomer, and she uh, was one who, the scripture says, was had a lot of issues. She was very... Uh, undecided. Somebody said loose. <laughs> Guess that could be a way to put it. But she was very undecided concerning whether or not she wanted to stay in a committed relationship. We're just going to use all the, you know, the, the nicer words, trying to be nice tonight. And so, you know, Hosea would go after her and he would pursue her and, you know, she'd be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to do right by you, Hosea. And then as soon as he turned his back, she'd go in total different direction. And, uh, you know, then he'd go in after her and go and find her and he'd pursue her and then she, you know, kind of come somewhat alive and say, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I guess we can do this thing. Let's try it again. So they tried again and tried again. But the Bible talks about how she was um, an adulterer and there was a lot of things that Hosea um, dealt with concerning her. But when you begin to read the end of the story, you see that love that overwhelmed, outshadowed, that relentless love that caused a shift and a change in her. Woo, just got quiet in here. <laughs> because that is the power of God's love that's on the inside of us. I don't know about you, there were many times when God was trying to woo me into things and trying to get me to follow him, and there was so many other concerning areas of my life that I couldn't yield myself to him, but it's just uh, similar to this example, this story here concerning Hosea and, and Gomer to the point where love never failed, and the Redeemer, the Redeemer showed up and redemption took place. 
And so there was change. There was a, a, an altering of the circumstance, of the outcome, and favor uh, f- made things different in, in their life. Even concerning the woman at the well, I'm thinking of the fact that, you know, when Jesus had that conversation with her at the well, and she was talking about, you know, yeah, I've been, been married five times, and I've done things, and, and uh, Jesus had to let her know that I am the one that you're thirsting after. And when he revealed himself to her, her life was never the same again. And there was a change, a a favorable outcome that took place in her life. And you know, that's what happens when we get over into understanding and getting a revelation and uh, realizing God's love, his everlasting love concerning us. And so look in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1, God can shift the heart of a king, referring to the authorities that are in the earth. He just like changed the heart of uh, Potiphar, he changed the heart of uh, Pharaoh, he changed the heart of so many of those who were in authority. And I'm telling you, he can turn the heart, he can shift the heart. One minute they didn't like you, but all of a sudden, they can't get you off their mind (laughs) to the point that they have to do something good for you. They have to recognize that there's something that's on the inside of me that makes me want to show you favor, that wants to do something that you haven't earned or deserve. I don't even like you, but I'm going to do something for you anyway. Good gosh, ooh, my goodness. How many of you know God is able? He's a way maker. So he says here, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whither so ever he will. So, you know, We have to realize that it all comes from him. The enemy wants us to focus on people, focus on, you know, individuals. But the scripture reminds us that we don't war against, you know, flesh and blood. The Bible says he has the heart. He has the spirit of everyone on the inside of him. And so it is the heart that God can turn. It is the heart that God can change. It is the will that he can direct concerning situations and circumstances in life. And so he can do that. Amen? Amen. I uh, am so amazed. You know, we started Prestige about eight, maybe 13 years ago, and the hearts that God placed concerning just doing good and doing well and blessing this uh, outreach of the ministry is just amazing. And there's just testimony after testimony. I'm sure many of you can testify of the fact when God begins to place something on someone's heart that all of a sudden unexplainable things began to come into your life and all you can do is just acknowledge that this is the Lord. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. People donated houses. People donated flowers, furniture, all kinds of stuff. They just said, the Lord placed it on my heart to be a blessing. Sent in funds, all kinds of things. Because the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Joe Biden's heart is in God's hand. This situation in the Middle East, it's in God's hand. He's able to reverse and change things that need to be changed. We must put our focus and keep our attention on him. So he says he turns it. He'll turn the heart whithersoever he wills to do his will. Amen? Amen. 
Now, let's look at how a divine shift can happen and turn around in our life. Look over at Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, because situations that were dead can all of a sudden come back to life. Just like that marriage, I'm sure, in Hosea's life felt like, oh my goodness, this girl's about to drive me nuts. <laughs> but all of a sudden, God got on the inside and God began to move behind the scenes. God began to turn her heart and got her will aligned with God's will. Then all of a sudden, that which was dead Amen. became alive. Amen? Amen. Look at Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 5. He says, The hand, thus saith the Lord God, unto these bones. Behold, I will cause what? Breath to enter into you, and you shall live. You shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. There it is again. And you shall what? Live. To the point that there was no life. There was nothing there on the bones. But all of a sudden, God says, you're going to live. And you, the scripture says what? Shall know that I am who? I am the Lord. Let's continue reading here. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. How I many you know something's happening? Something's moving in the realm of the Spirit. Something is different. The outcome is changing. Abruptly, things are about to take place. So he says, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. He prophesied to those bones. He spoke to those bones. He said, dry bones come alive. He said, can these bones live? And then the scripture says there was a noise, and behold, things began to shift. Things began to turn around. Things changed. And the bones came together bone to his bone. Let's continue. And when... I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. And, uh, and so he says uh, unto me, prophesy. You got to prophesy, church, to your situations. Don't sit back doing nothing, thinking that things are going to change. It's insane to think that you're going to continue to do the same thing and something different is going to happen. I'm telling you, began to prophesy. He said unto the men of God, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And so he prophesied, and look at what happened. And he commanded me, and the breath, I mean, you know, things are turning around, things are changing, different outcome, no more death. He says, the breath came into them. And what happened? They lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Some might say he can turn situations back. Take dead situations and bring the death back to life. Woo! I um, was... Thinking the other day, um, Dodie Osteen had come to our church years ago when we had a women's conference, and uh, back when she was 46 years old, the enemy attacked her body and said that she had uh, metastatic 
liver cancer to the point where she could not get any treatment for it. I, the doctor talked about how, you know, it was so far gone and where it was located in her body. There wasn't anything that uh, they could do. So they basically just sent her home to die. And um, all of a sudden, uh, this tumor that was on the inside of her was the size of an orange. And uh, you know what she did? She got in the Word of God. She confessed 62 scriptures a day as her medication. And 43 years later, you know what? She's praying for the sick, <laughs> casting out devils, <laughs> speaking in tongues, reminding the devil where he belongs. <sighs> he can turn dead situations around. God can turn bad news into good news. Look at 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 5. Let's just look at a couple things here just to stir up our faith and to put ourselves in remembrance. Don't tell me what's dead. I'm telling you we serve a God who is specializes in the impossible, in the incurable, in terminal situations. He can turn bad news into good news. Amen? Amen. And so this is Hezekiah here. Turn again. This is uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 5. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. There are some things that God is healing even right now. Healing in your relationships, healing in your body, healing where things are broken and things are not working like they should, areas that need to be repaired. I thank you, Lord, that you're healing right now. Things that were lost during the pandemic, areas that were gone, but he's causing restoration and reconciliation right now and bringing back to you not just like it was, but better than what it was. I remember when I lost my mother's jewelry. I had gotten her a Christmas gift several Christmases ago, and I was just heart sick because I had found this special piece. And I was so excited about getting her for her, her birthstone, and so I had, you know, put this bag down in the store, and um, I went to get up as I was leaving the store, and the bag was gone. And so I was just heart sick. I said, oh my God, are you serious right now? So I looked around everywhere. I talked to the people who were in the store, the clerks, and did you all have a bag? Is there a bag? Did you move the bag? Did you see the bag? They said, ma'am, it's so many people in here. This is Christmas time. We're so busy. No, there's no bag. And they said, well, you know, you could probably file a claim with the, uh, the security at the mall and just letting them know what's going on and maybe uh, good luck with that, but I doubt it very seriously. I mean, it is a holiday time and the likelihood of that being returned, it is what it is. And so, you know, I went and got the security guy and I told him everything that had happened and that I had, uh, my, had my back taken, my back, I don't know if it was stolen, but it was obviously not there where I had left it. And so I left my phone number at the store and I said, well, you know, I, I'm just going to believe. I'm just going to hope against hope. I'm just going to dare to trust that somebody, somehow this thing will get returned. And you know what? The store called me. They said, ma'am, this is so unlikely, but someone brought your bag back. You can come and get it. Come and pick it up. And you know what? I just believe that was just the heart of God. Amen because he knew that was something that mattered to me. And so don't settle for the bad news in your life and just say, well, you know, because I could have said, well, you know, I guess, hey, it's a bunch of thieves out here, and I guess the thief got a hold of me. No. 
Dare to believe God. Dare to trust God for a favorable, beneficial, a positive outcome in your life. You may say, that's so simple. That's so small. But you know what? God specializes in the small things. He says, I will count the hairs on your head. How many of you know if he's concerned about the hairs on your head, he's concerned with every area of your life. But the enemy doesn't want us to think that way. The enemy wants us to give up, to cave in, to give in to hope, to give up our hope in things concerning where God's plan and what he wills for our life. Amen? So let's recognize that there is a shift and that it's already taken place. And so there are things that God is turning in our life and things and people that he's turning and his will is directing and his plan is coming together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So God turns weeping to joy. Look at Jeremiah 31, verse 13. He turns mourning into joy. He turns sadness into happiness, into peace. 31.13 says, Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And so he says that he will turn their weeping to joy as we see it here in the scripture. God changes darkness into light. Just like he did in the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, you know, in the beginning in the word, uh, God made the heaven and the earth and darkness. He caused the light to come out of the darkness. So he changes on the inside, the darkness and the things on the exterior realm into the light. Look at John chapter 1, verse 5. John chapter 1, verse 5. And I could go on and on and on about so many different stories. I remember we were in South Africa one time, and this pastor, assistant pastor, shared with me. He said, you know what? I really love and appreciate the ministry of Dr. Dollar because, you know, before I got a hold of the things that he was teaching, I didn't have any shoes. In fact, I didn't have any flip-flops. I didn't have anything. We were so broke, we just could not even believe that there was a God that would even allow me to get a pair of shoes. And so once he began to share with me his testimony of how not longer, not only did he get shoes, but he got him a house and moved into a neighborhood, and now he's in full-time ministry. And so, you know, this is the power of the Word and how things can shift and change in a person's life. Things can shift and things can change in a person's life. Amen? Amen. So it says, and the light shineth in darkness. Thank God for the light in darkness. Amen? Amen. And the darkness comprehended it not. And so God is working behind the scenes. The darkness isn't going to comprehend everything. That's why we are not part of the dark. We are part of the light. They're not going to understand why we do what we do. They're not going to understand why we give, why we read our Bibles, why we pray, why we pursue peace, why we stay away from all the uh, negativity and toxicity. That's because they comprehend it not. And so, you know, realize that there is change that is taking place behind the scenes. Glory be to God. I remember one time I was in Australia and I got a text from my niece and she uh, sent me this text that said my brother had gotten shot. Of course, I did not know if he was still alive. I didn't know what had happened. Uh, I knew he was at work and that was the only thing that she put on the text. And so... I just could not even fathom or process what that message was. And so, lo and behold, things just began to 
get more information, more details and things like that started to come through. But, you know, I realized that it was, it is always the enemy behind everything because that's what he wants to do, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Thank God it was only his hand. He was able to get it fixed. He's born again, loves God. But the enemy is behind all these things, but we've got to realize that God is working behind the scenes. So regardless of what the enemy is trying to do, God is doing so much more to get the glory, to get the praise, to get the honor, to get the recognition in our lives, to be magnified above the negativity. Because there's a shift that's taking place in people's lives. That's why we can't just, just throw in the towel at different seasons or mistakes and things that they're going through because God is able. He is El Shaddai, the most high God above all. And so let's look at a couple of things here. In order for the shift to take place as we bring this to a close, enter into his rest, number one. Speak loud to your circumstances. Declare God's promises, like we just read in Ezekiel, to give you victory. Enter into his rest. As much as you can get into a place of being still and knowing that he is God, that'll get you into a place where God can speak to you and minister to you. Speak out loud boldly to your circumstances and declare the word of the Lord. Another thing, call the things that be not as though they are. Romans 4, verse 17. No matter what the situation looks like, don't call it like it is. Call it like the Word of God says that be not as though it is. That's Romans 4, 17 again. Um, another thing that you can do is begin to sow seed as an act to demonstrate your faith and commit yourself to testify. I'm just waiting on God to just Give the green light on the testimonies that are going to be released and to the praise reports that come as a result of the shift and the turnaround. So, Father, we bow our heads before you, acknowledging that you are El Shaddai, the most high God, the many-breasted one, the the one who is seated high above every situation, every circumstance. You said there's no one like you in all the earth. And so, God, we allow you to take your place as the way maker, as the one who uh, causes pathways to be made and through the Red Sea and the situations in our life, the one who causes the barren woman to have children, the one who causes supernatural things to take place in the lives of his people. The one that brings the death back to life and causes the bad news to be turned into the good news. Lord, I just declare tonight that we are your people and we yield ourselves to your plan, your purpose, and all the things that you want to do in our life. And so as we yield our will, we thank you that you will show up and begin to show out. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ooh, that was good. Wasn't that a good word? Sheesh. Pastor Taffy be on one. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and move forward. This is our opportunity to 
offer salvation. For those of you who are out there, if you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord over your life, Jehovah Shammah that she talked about, God is, he's, he's so much we can't even verbalize it, but it's all available to you as a believer. If you have not made that decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord over your life, we want to offer that to you today. Everything that we ever do is about this one major decision and then building that relationship. So if you're out there here in the church, or if you're online and you've not made Jesus Christ the Lord over your life, I want you to do it by simply repeating this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge and admit that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I ask you to come into my heart, be my Lord, be my savior, be my God. I believe that you died on the cross just for me. I receive your salvation and declare that this day I am forever yours. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just repeated that after me, I want us to celebrate, welcome them into the family of God. Listen, every time, every time someone joins our family, we are super excited about it. Lord, we are really, truly in the last days, guys. I mean, now I've been hearing this for as long as I was a little kid, but for real, for real, Jesus is coming. Okay, so we want to make sure, we just want to make sure that we get as many people as we can because we are going to meet our Father really soon. So we welcome you, and we're super excited to have you as a part of the family. Now we want to finalize our uh, experience with uh, offering. So if you are ready to go ahead and give your offering, I want you to uh, raise your hand. The ushers will minister to you if you're online, of course. You are able to give by texting World Changes plus the amount to 74483, or you can um, take advantage of the other options by phone, by mail, or on the website. Listen, guys, we don't have to give. We get to give, and that's not something cliche that we say, but we literally use this opportunity to let the Lord know, Lord, we trust you with everything. This is simply just a tool for us to give to you what you have already blessed us with, right? All right, so if you have your offerings ready, we're gonna go ahead and pray over them, and then we're gonna receive the blessing so that we can go. All right, so if you would, hold that up. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity that we get to give. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you with our finances, and we give this with love, we give it with grace in our heart. We give it with faith, knowing that it's going to do what it needs to do, Father. We trust you with everything that we have, knowing that you're going to make sure that all is well with us, Father. So we declare that these seeds will go and they will grow. We thank you, Lord, for the lives that will be touched as a result. We thank you, Lord, for the work that will be, will be done as a result. Father, we thank you, Lord, for every person under the sound of my voice that's willing to be obedient to what you would have us to do and sow and give, Father. And we speak life increase, and we speak wholeness over every single offering. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. All that agree said amen. All right, let's go ahead and we can go ahead and give. For those of you that are online, thank you for joining us tonight. We are super, super excited about what God is doing here at World Changes Nation. How many of you are experiencing the shift in your life? How many of you received that word, right? Things are shifting in our favor. We're going to declare that. We're laying hold of that. We're speaking that. Every morning I uh, do confessions with teenagers um, on World Changes YE, and I tell them, hey, listen, as believers, we have the authority to speak things into existence and then see it happen. So when you hear Pastor Taffy say a shift is taking place, you open your mouth and you say that shift is shifting in my life, right? We use our authority. 
as believers of God. Amen? Let's go ahead and stand up so we can be dismissed. All right. And y'all know, I just got to do this one thing before we leave. Just go ahead and look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I'm telling you now, keep watching because the shift is taking place in my life and yours. All right. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the word that we received tonight. Lord God, we lay hold on what came forth tonight. We declare that the shift will take place in our lives, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are shifting things in our favor. You're shifting things in our life to have a favorable outcome, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are reversing those things that man said was irreversible, Father. We thank you, Lord, even those things that we don't know about, Lord God, you're going to go ahead and shift them before we even know, or know that it's going on, Father. And we receive that now in our lives. We declare that all is well in our lives, Father. And we receive the goodness that comes as a result of being your child. In Jesus' name, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present us faultless before the Almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Everybody said amen. You guys are dismissed. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Yeah.